Good evening. I'm Susan Rizzo, your Albany County Comptroller, and I'm here to once again deliver Albany County's annual State of the Fisc. I will be giving a statement regarding the 2023 year-end fiscal picture and the solid financial foundation that puts the county in an excellent position in 2023 and going forward to 2024. On slide three, let's start with the 2023 financial results. The required New York State annual financial report was due April 30th. This is an unaudited document. This annually updated document called the AFR was filed on time, again, for my fifth consecutive year. This was a great accomplishment by my accounting team. Slide four shows the general fund, unassigned fund balance compared to year over year. Fund balance is essentially the accumulation of annual surpluses or money the county has built up for future use. These funds are used throughout the year as cash flow fluctuates each month. Therefore, fund balance does not remain idle. As you can see from this slide, the general fund unassigned fund balance increased to $138.8 million, a $43.8 million increase or 46.1% increase. When analyzing the unassigned fund balance, you shouldn't look at one number. You need to analyze multiple factors. One such factor being debt reserve and other reserves to help get a more accurate picture. An unassigned fund balance is a point in time, a reflection of the cash flow at that time. Slide five, why did unassigned fund balance increase by $43.8 million or 46% at year end 2023? I'll give you some context as to why 2023 increase was so great. In slide six, the increase was primarily due to stellar sales tax results as compared to budget. Net sales tax to the county exceeded budget by $11.6 million or 5.7%. In 2023, inflation was a substantial contributor. These unprecedented increases are projected to not continue at the pace sales tax has increased over the past two years. Another factor is our personnel costs. There were 543 vacant positions at year end 2023, a $24.5 million savings. Even though it, this is a direct increase to fund balance, it is detrimental to Albany County and the services we provide. Going on to slide eight, regarding total interest income. The Commissioner of Management Budget as the Chief Investment Officer, works in conjunction with my office to substantially increase interest income. Interest rates are higher. To maximize income, we are collectively investing every dollar, analyzing cash flow and reviewing bank balances. Also, the Comptroller's Office negotiates with the bank to maximize the minimum interest rates on checking and money market accounts. I am proud to report we recently negotiated increased rates by 25 to 35 basis points. Included in the general fund interest income is the ARPA funds, interest of $3.1 million. On our investment accounts, the interest rate is currently 5.3%, whereas at the same time last year, it was 4.8%. Some economists indicate that interest rates would decrease by at least 25 to 50 basis points. Previous predictions indicated a reduction in the summer months with a second reduction in year end. Due to inflation and global conflicts continuing, economists are now more conservative in their optimism. As you can see from slide nine, hotel occupancy tax also increased a mere $1 million, but at 10.8% increase. The current hotel occupancy tax is 6%, 2% to the Civic Center Debt Service Fund, 3% to the Albany Convention Center Authority, 1% to the Albany County Convention and Visitors Bureau. I'm bringing this up because at the end of 2024, the state legislature should address the allocation of occupancy tax as compared to previous years so Albany County receives an equitable share that could be dedicated to economic development. 
I encourage your advocacy regarding this matter. As you can see in slide 10, Albany County has a solid financial foundation. I would like to highlight Albany County's long-term debt. As you can see, the county's total debt has declined since 2020, primarily due to the Civic Center and the nursing facility renovations that were bonded in 2019. Most recently, my office has recommended not borrowing for two years in a row. Our debt avoidance over this period of time stands at $17.5 million. By reducing our debt, this puts Albany County in a strong position to achieve a better credit rating. Next, I would like to speak about 2023 audit highlights. The following audits were completed in 2023. One, district attorney's use of grant monies. Two, performed inventory of all fixed assets whereby my office located each and every asset on the books and adjusted the records accordingly. This work was completed in 2023. Three, my office established recording accounts receivable by departments beginning in 2022, a written policy and a procedure was developed relating to recording, collecting, and writing off accounts receivable. We continue to add additional departments to this program. Four, we audited 34 hotels to maintain compliance regarding hotel occupancy tax. In regards to future audits for 2024, one, we have started a coroner financial activity audit. Two, we are reviewing inmate commissary accounts. The correctional facility annual cash audit related to inmate funds is performed to ensure compliance with New York State regulations. This review is ongoing. Three, bank reconciliations continue to be analyzed. Other fiscal highlights. Previously, we discussed interest income for the general fund. In regards to all funds, the county made a total of $15.8 million ahead of budget by $14.6 million. This includes ARPA interest income of $3.1 million and $3.2 million for capital borrowed and not yet spent. As highlighted on slide 17 regarding the utilization of ARPA funds, $7.7 million of the second tranche of $29.7 million still needs to be allocated by year end. The additional $29.7 million is to be allocated towards revenue recovery. Next, I would like to talk about the 24-25 priorities. My first priority is strengthening our credit rating from AA stable. In 2020, when I initially met with Standard & Poor's regarding what Albany County could do to increase their credit rating, they mentioned the following. One, create a debt and fund policy. Done. OPEB liability correction identified, reduced by $300 million. Very significant. Three, have a substantial fund balance, done. Four, reduce debt, I was listening, done. My second priority is Albany County is going paperless. We are implementing electronic payments, including ACH, to increase security and reduce administrative burden. Also implementing electronic claim submission by departments. Those priorities are consistent with strong fiscal management with solid financial policies, practices, and oversight, which are protecting Albany County taxpayers. In conclusion, when looking at the strong unassigned general fund balance, decreased long-term debt, increased sales tax collections, and our current strong credit rating of AA stable, the county has a solid financial foundation. We should be thankful for such an excess in fund balance today. But remember, not long ago in 2020, we had to borrow $40 million to meet the county's operational needs. Again, I would like to reiterate, if the county has ample cash, consider not borrowing for a larger portion of capital projects and using the general fund surplus to continue 
a policy of debt avoidance. Such a policy would be to the benefit of all county taxpayers and will be viewed favorably by credit rating agencies. I appreciate the efforts of this legislature. Thank you for your time and attention.